Hello everyone. First and foremost, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that I'm speaking to you today from UBC's Vancouver campus, which is located on the traditional, ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. And as we reflect on this, I would encourage all of you to visit the First Nations Health Authority website and review the diagram of the circle of wellness, reflecting the contribution of social, environmental, cultural and economic factors to health and wellness. Truly important concepts for physicians today. It is my great pleasure to welcome all of you to UBC Faculty of Medicine's undergraduate medical program. This is indeed a joyous occasion, as I know that you've all worked incredibly hard to get here at this very moment. UBC is one of the great universities of the world, and you are now part of a globally leading medical faculty where education, research, discovery, and the advancement of knowledge go hand in hand along with a deep commitment to and a contract with society. Which is to say, we must always keep the patient and the community first at the center of everything we do as students, faculty, and staff. Our contract with society is guided by the faculty's core values of respect, integrity, compassion, collaboration, and equity. Our strategic plan also emphasizes our contract with ourselves, treating each other with respect based on those very same values. It is these values that underpin the faculty's belief that an inclusive learning, work, and healthcare environment free of racism and discrimination would support those with drive, curiosity, and excellence to truly transform health for everyone here at home and around the world. Indeed, medicine can be seen as both an art and a science. It requires us to listen and to empathize. It's not just about treating disease, it's also about creating pathways to better health and well being for everyone, regardless of their age, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, location socioeconomic means or ability. The work that we do changes lives, other people's lives as well as, as our own. Whether we do this as medical students encountering our first patients or as researchers developing breakthrough medicines, we're always contributing to something greater than ourselves. When we wake up in the morning to write our careers, we know that what we will do during the day is about improving the human condition about making people's lives better. And what could be better than that? When I reflect on my own career, I'm astonished not only by how rewarding my life as a doctor has been, but by just how far medicine had advanced in a few short decades. Let me give you one example. When I was a medical student in the 1970s, we consistently saw patients with Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, debilitating conditions that destroyed people's lives. It's hard to comprehend today how difficult life was for people with these conditions, living with chronic pain, disability, incapacitating gastrointestinal symptoms, and worse still, the effects of the medications, steroids, aspirin, drugs that produce very serious side effects. And 35 years ago, we treated the disease, not the patient. We rarely, if ever, considered how these conditions affected people's normal lives, let alone their mental health. Patients faced the difficult prospect of a chronic, lifelong illness without the counseling and support that they needed. The best that young people with these conditions could hope for was a progression of disease that wasn't too life-altering. But today, thanks to advances in both research in the biological basis of disease and our greater understanding of mental health and well-being, people can live full, healthy, productive lives with these conditions. Medical science has been truly transformational. These diseases can now largely be effectively managed with drugs like biologic agents that target inflammation. But always remember that counseling and compassion, kind words about a hopeful future, all help to ensure a patient's holistic well-being. There's even hope that further advances are in sight. Researchers here at UBC are among those making breakthrough discoveries in the fields today. So, 
For people with chronic diseases, such as Crohn's, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and others, medicine has advanced so much over the last few decades. So it is important that you as students begin the process of lifelong learning so that you continue to learn as you practice. And most importantly, what hasn't changed in medicine since the dawn of time is the need for listening, for compassion, for kind words, and for empathy. It's not just about the medication. But this is just one set of examples. There are countless others. Every day, as a faculty and as a profession, extraordinary research at the bench and the bedside is happening right here at UBC and throughout the province and around the world. Keep an eye on this work. You may even someday contribute to it. So, beginning today, you too become part of this wonderful profession. Over the next four years, you learn from an amazing array of faculty and clinical faculty, brilliant clinicians and researchers. Your education will take you far and wider around the province and in many different directions, from operating theatres to research laboratories to rural and remote clinics. Throughout our distributed medical programme, which will prepare you for a career like no other. I can't think of anything more exciting or more rewarding. And as you begin your journey, um, whether it's in Prince George, Victoria, the Okanagan, or in Vancouver, Fraser, my advice to you is this. Keep your sense of curiosity. Make sure to ask a lot of questions, as it will truly expand your horizon and understanding of medicine. Don't be afraid to ask questions, as sometimes seemingly simple questions from medical students may make us ask fundamental questions about a patient or a condition. Most importantly, respect everyone, your fellow students, your faculty and staff, health professionals, and most importantly, your patients. You'll see patients at their worst moments in life, and it's important to recognize their suffering and to help and support them during these difficult times. It's also important to never, never, never be judgmental about the circumstances that bring someone to your attention. And always remember how important it is to respect the culture of your patients. Cultural safety and humility saves lives. And you must seize every experience as an opportunity to learn and grow, not only from your teachers, but also from many health professions and patients that you will meet along the way. Most importantly, be kind to yourselves and enjoy this incredible journey. This also means supporting and being there for each other. Your fellow students will become lifelong friends and future colleagues. I speak for all of us here at the UBC Faculty of Medicine when I say congratulations and welcome. And I wish you all the very best in the years ahead.